Good day everyone. Today is a beautiful day and I know I haven't made videos in a long time but today it's about to change. So what I have here I have a battery for the turbo ant scooters that I picked up off of uh, marketplace. So I picked up a couple of these and both had the bad batteries. Yesterday I spent uh, all day rebuilding the battery for one of them. Uh, so today I'm going to take you along for the ride on rebuilding the battery. For the second one, since I'm already a professional pretty much after redoing the first one, so if you're interested, stay tuned. So the first thing I have to do, I have to pop out this uh, rubber garments over here, one, two, three, four, there's four on each side there, and there's just uh, four screws holding uh, this little plastic piece, one side and the other, so that's the first step. Alright, so I removed the, the eight screws, four on each side there, and the next thing was that I used the knife to kind of scar up this glue that holds this little, uh, the battery in place more or less. So the next step is to use something to push the battery out of the case down there. So I don't know if I'll be able to show it on the camera, I'll try my best, but I'm just going to grab something and push this whole pack out that way from this end out to the end so let me see if i can show that on the video All right, so I've gotten a little further than uh, <laughs> I originally anticipated, but I, I took uh, the battery out, I stripped all the uh, shrink wrap off of it, and then uh, all the little uh, protection stuff, I tried to save everything so I can reuse it and put it back together. And uh, so there is the pack. The pack is a 10S 4P, so it's a, you know, 36 yeah, it'll be 36 volt, 37 volt, whatever, depending on the lithium ion chemistry that used the pack. So 10 of them in series will give you, you know, 36 or 37 volts. And then the four cells in parallel, so four groups of four, as you can see here. So you got one group of four, second group of four, third, fourth, and so on. So what happens a lot of times with these packs is that one of the cells will die and uh, it will drag down the whole group. So you would, uh, you know, if this cell dies, the other three will kind of go down with it and then eventually they end up at zero and uh, the whole pack is no good anymore because BMS, battery management systems on this end right here, senses every single group and then it balances it, makes sure all the cells are at the same voltage. And if something happens to one of the groups, the whole pack shuts down. It's just a safety thing, you know, you know, if you don't want to overcharge other cells and once these cells go down to zero, it dies. So our job is to figure out which group of cells is dead or below voltage threshold also, because what that could be, 
a BMS could say, hey, if it belows, falls below like two volts per group, it will shut down the whole pack again. So we're going to measure the voltage in every single group of cells and figure out which one of them are bad. In my old pack that I just rebuilt yesterday, 12 cells were bad. So with three cell groups of four failed completely. They were at zero volts. So I'm assuming kind of same thing happens with this one. And as uh, soon as we figure out which cells are bad, we'll figure out our game plan on replacing them. In the old pack from yesterday, I just replaced every single cell. I, I got the 40 new cells. I took everything apart and I soldered all the cells back together. And there was a lot of work on hopefully on this one. There is a little less cells that failed. And uh, we can uh, get away with just replacing a few cells here. So uh, I'm gonna t what I'm going to do, I'm going to test the voltage in every single cell group. I'm going to go like this, 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 this. See where the voltages are at. And uh, I'll get back to you. All right. So I tested all the cells. And uh, this is what the numbers I got. All the groups are in 3.89-ish volts, which is, you know, pretty balanced. Up until we get up to the last group right here. Our group 10 is 0 0.26 volts. Uh, if uh, this group was like above 1 but below 2-ish, what I could do, I could just probably charge this cell group right here separately with like RC charger or something like that, bring it up to the voltage of the other groups and I could probably restore the pack without replacing any of the cells here. But since it's pretty low, 0.26, I'm not going to chance just recharging this uh, group here. What I'm going to do, I'm going to replace this last group, which is kind of lucky, I believe. I might be able to get these uh, batteries out just kind of from the top over here. And without uh, taking the whole pack apart, I might be able to wiggle these batteries out, kind of redo these uh, spot welds over here, and uh, just replace these cells. Because what I got going on, I got a bunch of these cells left from the last scooter that I had. But in case you needed to order some, here's some numbers right here for you. I'm gonna check it out. So you might be able to just type this number into Google and get uh, you know exact same cells. Well, preferably if you're just replacing, you know, just a part of them, you, know, you would want to find identical cells. But like I said, I'm lucky because yesterday I replaced every single battery on the last scooter and I have like 20 some of these uh, cells left. So I'm going to replace these four and I'll show you how I'll do that. And uh, the pack should be back to normal. We should be able to restore this pack by just replacing this last group of cells because everything else is good. All right, so uh, I desoldered the main negative just to free up these cells. Then I took all the spot welds off. The all four of these were grouped together. And also on this side right here, uh, you know, you used to run all, the, all eight of these connected together, but I uh, took the spot welds off of these four just to free up the cells. Now we should be able to Sorry, it's just hard to do it with one hand to kind of wiggle these cells out and replace them with the new ones. Like I said, my new ones is the from the scooter that I rebuilt yesterday since I replaced every single cell on that end. So I took everything apart. It took forever. I took all the spot welds off and I re-spot welded the new cells in the exact same pattern. So I have identical cells left and uh, I'm going to replace these four with it. So I'm just going to kind of try to pry it apart. I won't be able to do it with one hand, I don't believe, and try to wiggle these cells out and work these four into the cell holders here without taking anything else apart. So I'm going to try to do that and uh, try to record it for you guys.
right, so I got the new cells in. Had to take spot welds off of these four cells also, just so I could pry this out a little further. So I'll have to respot weld all eight of these together. Uh, whenever you put the new cells, make sure that they go in the right way, obviously, which, you know, I put them in the right way. And also, you want to make sure that the voltage of all these four cells are the same and close to the ones that are here. So all these ones here are about 3.9 as we tested. These ones are right about 4 volts uh, you know, all for these. So uh, I believe this is something that uh, a balancing system on this BMS will be able to take care of and balance the whole pack once uh, we get it all together and get it charged up. So yeah, the next step would be to use a uh, uh, large spot welder. I got the little spot welder and I use, uh, it's pretty cool, and then I got some strip. So I'm going to make a new strip, kind of go this way, spot weld all eight of these, flip it around and spot weld the uh, four for the main negative of the pack and get everything resoldered and we'll give it a quick test there. Uh, quick note there, if you don't have a spot welder, you might be able to just, you know, uh, regular solder these cells in together, but the keep in mind that uh, if you solder the cells you heat them up every time you heat them up their life kind of goes down their capacity goes down a little bit for every time you heat them up to the extreme temperatures that you would with solder so the best to invest into a little spot welding gun i got the di1 y1 but i mean they sell a bunch of these spot welders on the line and it's a great investment if you work a lot on, on the, these battery projects a lot so uh uh, yep, yeah, I'm gonna get these uh, spot welded. I'll try to show that on the video flip it around spot weld the other four and then uh, I'll show you the end result Alrighty, so I spot welded all of these. Mine, of course, are not as pretty as factory, but they definitely do the job. They're fairly strong. I also resoldered the bounce cable for this uh, group of cells here. Flip it around. Also, spot welded these four together. That's going to be your main negative, and I just got to resolder this. Just wait for my solder gun to heat up over there. So I'm going to solder this back up right here. And after that, just start putting everything back together. Well, actually, before putting it back together, I'm going to test it, make sure it's all working correctly. So I'm going to solder this up, and then we'll take it to the scooter, and then give it a quick test run, make sure that uh, everything is working before putting it back together. All right, so I have the battery pack plugged up, just kind of temporarily, just to make sure it's working. So this is a repaired cells. I actually ended up soldering this last wire over here. Everything else looks great, so uh, now is the moment of the truth just to make sure it's all working. I'm gonna power it up real quick. <laughs> and it comes on. Yeah, all it took is four cells. This is way easier on the second one than it was in the first one. That's awesome. So, anyways, that's uh, powered on, and then, yeah. I have the settings changed so the throttle comes on right away so you don't have to, you know, do the roll. But yeah, that's awesome. Nine mile an hour, switch it to... Oh yeah, At 20 mile an hour right there. Sweet! Awesome. So yeah, that's, uh, that's working, so the next step is just to put all this back together just like it was, get it back in the case and uh, the job will be done. Alrighty guys, and that's it right here. It's all assembled. I'm charging it up so that way it charges all the way, balances all the cells uh, to the same voltage, 
and uh, yeah it'll be good to go to go riding and thanks for sticking around just to kind of wanted to give you uh guys a heads up there that this is not a tutorial on how to this is just my experience of fixing these batteries uh it's very dangerous to work on a lithium-ion batteries if you short them out if you don't hook them up correctly uh, it could cause fires it's a they're not the safest thing but uh, if done correctly, you can obviously fix the packs for very cheap compared to buying a whole new battery for these. It's like a couple hundred, two hundred fifty dollars to buy the just the battery. Very expensive, but basically fixed it at no cost. Uh, for the first one, I had the cells already laying around. They were just uh, 25 milliamp hour high discharge cells that I replaced all of them. And this one, obviously, we just replaced four. And I used the old cells from the old one just to put them in here so that was a very cost efficient uh, very cheap to fix these and uh, hopefully it lasts a long time uh, but I do appreciate you guys sticking around uh, going through my experience I'm gonna take these for a ride I just edit to the end of the video if you just kind of want want to watch me ride around town you can but uh, hopefully I'll start making more videos and then uh, uh, you guys can enjoy the <laughs> the content of me fixing things and uh, making things and all sorts of cool stuff there I do appreciate you, until the next one.